My hiking wardrobe really hasn't changed that much in the last few hikes, but that's a good thing. You know, I've done the work, I've gone through all of these hikes, I've taken the time and made a lot of mistakes, and changed to the point where I feel really good, I'm prepared. I feel like I know what I'm doing as far as what I'm wearing. If I know the temperature and have an idea of what the trail is, I know what to bring. I'm no longer getting blisters, I'm no longer getting sunburnt, and I wanna help you prepare. So I'm just gonna share what I've learned uh, this past year about what I wear when I go hiking. I think it all comes down to something I call dirty layering. Uh, you have to be okay <laughs> with the fact that you're going to be dirty on trail. If you try to stay clean, like normal clean, I guess. Uh, you're going to be bringing a lot of extra clothes and washing. It's just something that I don't do anymore. I have a base layer that's just like a sun hoodie, underwear, shorts or pants, socks, boots, and then I layer on top of that what I need to stay warm or protected. It really comes down to those two things, mobility and protection. I wanna wear the least amount of clothes possible, Get your mind out of the gutter. But still be protected from the elements, temperature, sunlight, terrain, and bugs like mosquitoes. So I'm really trying to maximize my freedom. And yes, there's an element of minimalism in that. But uh, you gotta be okay with being dirty. And if you go for a hike for a week, you know, and you don't shower, it's not the end of the world. I, I think it's part of the fun to just like put up with being dirty while on trail. And when I hike, I go hard. I'm a little aggressive, athletic, competitive and I try to go fast. You know, I'm sweating, especially uphill. So I eventually start to stink and I'm pretty gross. But what does it matter? There's really no one else to smell me or judge me. I'm hiking by myself, but even if there were, you know, people at camp, what's it matter? Eh, I, I really don't care at this point. I'm out there to hike. It's just a part of it. So I think this is one of the best things that new hikers can do to lighten their pack adopt dirty layering. So I'm gonna go through a timeline of my hikes, like how I prepared, what I've learned through it all. And it all starts down to Chokakira in Peru. This was my first hike. I really was not prepared for the heat and the sun because I didn't have a hat, which is dumb, 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 dumb. I was getting sunburnt on my forehead, my ears, my back of my neck, especially um, my arms, my thighs. I was applying the sunscreen, but because it was so hot and I was sweating so much. It was just like coming right up off of me. Like you can see white marks on my black shirt and stuff because the sunscreen was white and just dripping right off my nose. I also had really, really terrible boots. I booked this trip last minute and just expected to buy hiking boots when I got to Peru in Cusco. And I did and they were expensive and were not the right size. So I could not, find large size boots. So they were too small, they cramped up my toes, I got blisters on this hike, on the heels of my foot, and my big toenail, cringe alert, fell off. <laughs> it took some time, but it got black and blue on this hike just because the shoes, the boots were so small, and they hurt a lot. Like, you can kind of tell on my face when I'm crossing the bridge at night that I was not feeling good. <laughs> And when I had to uh, go up the desert side in the direct sunlight the last day with all that elevation, you know, I was dehydrated, going a little crazy, and the sun was just getting to me. So I was, that was the least prepared I'd ever been for a hike, but it makes sense, you know, I was beginning, I was learning. Second was half dome, a bit easier temperature, an easier hike. I was in the forest a lot, so it was easier, but I did get hiking zip off pants, which are great because you can turn them into pants, you can turn them into shorts, go either or. I wore shorts a lot that, that hike, but still no hat, terrible boots, terrible, terrible, terrible. Horn Strindier was next and I still had no hat. <laughs> Once again, you see the, the pattern. I did have a beanie because I knew it was a colder hike, so I did bring some warmer, warmer clothes, but I, I actually was wearing the beanie just to protect my forehead as much as possible, just because I didn't expect it to be so sunny. Um, I definitely should have had like a normal hat because I was getting a little sunburnt for sure. You can see after the hike when I'm in the hostel, like my skin is so tan. I wore pants and a shell with the hoodie up to protect against the bugs. They weren't biting. They were just like tiny gnats that would follow me around and just try to get up my nose, my ears, uh, attack my eyes because of the moisture. That was not fun. I was not protected against that. Should have had a, a net 
or something. And then I'd take off my pants and socks and shoes to cross streams and then walk, walk barefoot on the beach when I could. I actually stripped down to take a dip in a pond at one point. It was nice, it was cold. Um, but yeah, it, that trail was actually much wetter than I showed in the video. So my boots and my socks were getting pretty soaked during the day. I dried my socks on the outside of my pack while hiking, which is pretty good. I suggest that. Socks are the one thing that I would bring an extra pair of on hikes because if they get wet, you want to uh, help them dry quickly on the outside of your pack. And then at night at camp, you know, if you can try to dry them out as much as possible. Iceland during the summer is perfect because the sun never sets. It never dips below the horizon. So I was able to dry more than usual then. And I still had terrible boots. <laughs> It took some time, but a month later, I, I did Tour de Mont Blanc, and this is where I really stepped it up on a lot of fronts. I finally got a sun hoodie because I was copying Curtis, my brother, who does a lot of hiking, and he suggested that I use a sun hoodie. It was like a long sleeve shirt with thumb holes and a hood. So this protects you from the sun and gives you a little extra warmth. If you need it, you just unravel the sleeves and it protects you from bugs. It's just pretty good all in all. And this is my main base layer. I always wear a sun hoodie now. So the 360 brim hat, I know, looks lame, but did really well to protect me from the sun. I didn't keep it. I moved to a different hat, but it was good. And then finally, running shoes. I got away from the boots. So these were just like Nike running shoes and they helped me to do like 20 plus miles a day. This was the first time that I didn't get blisters while on trail. I think my heels were a little calloused from uh, Iceland, but still, I felt so good on this hike that I was just crushing mile after mile. And yeah, running shoes, so much better than boots. And then ironically, so many people in the comments of that video made fun of me <laughs> for wearing those shoes. They're like, get some hiking boots. It's just silly, it's funny. Like I'm definitely more of a trail runner shoe kind of person than boots. This is also where I got a sleeping bag liner, which is super important for all of this for keeping clean. Sleeping bag liner is like a very thin sleeping bag inside your sleeping bag. And if you're dirty, which I am, you just go inside that and it keeps your normal sleeping bag clean, which is harder to wash. The liner is machine washable and that's that. You know, I, I use a sleeping bag liner on every hike now just to keep my sleeping bag clean and I wash it in between hikes. And also I sleep in my underwear, <laughs> spoiler alert, in the liner in the sleeping bag, just because if you wear too many layers, you start to sweat and it's not that fun of an experience. Of course, if it's super cold, I'm going to wear layers to sleep, but by taking off all my clothes except my underwear, I let those dry overnight in the tent. And then if you take your, you know, you take your boots off at night or your shoes, make sure to take the insoles, the, the inside layer out to dry. That helps it all dry faster overnight. Next was the Adirondacks in the New York State High Peaks. I established my look. <laughs> The white hat. I like it because I never see anyone wearing white hats. It's very lightweight. It dries quickly. And then, you know, forward it protects my eyes and my forehead from the sun. And then backwards it protects my neck. I got my light gray hoodie, uh, my light gray sun hoodie from Amazon. It's got thumb holes. It's very lightweight. It dries quickly. It's just the best. I love it. It's my secret weapon for sure. But it rained a lot that trip. And I had a Uniqlo shell, like a black rain jacket says it's waterproof. Mm, not really. I was just soaked that entire first day. Picos de Europa in Spain was after that. My favorite hike to this day. Oh, it was such a good experience. So I tried these Columbia hiking shoes. They were a little too stiff for me. I finally got good socks, the ones that I'm actually wearing right now. Thin-ish wool wicking athletic socks compared to the thick wool socks or cotton socks that I was wearing before. You should never wear cotton. Stay away from cotton when it comes to hiking because wool stays warm when it's wet and it dries faster. My sun hoodie. <laughs> so Curtis was making fun of me because I was wearing my sun hoodie underneath the white hat. And he said that looks really stupid and you shouldn't do that. But I hate it when you wear the hood on the outside of the hat because it just like blows off in the wind. I've tried both. I might go back to a hoodie underneath the hat just for a utility sake, but I'm sure it looks lame. Let me know. Grand Canyon was my first really cold hike. Apparently it gets really cold 
in the desert during the winter and it was dropping down like single degree digits at night. So I had a winter hat, gloves, I had a neck gaiter and I only bring them on the hike if I need them. You know, I know the temperature and then I give or take plus or minus 10 degrees. Santa Cruz was when I established my Brooks Cascadia trail running shoes. Once again, stolen from Curtis. <laughs> You're seeing the theme here. Uh, Curtis does something and then I steal his idea. Uh, so these are trail running shoes. They protect me pretty well, but they're lightweight. I'm very nimble and they're definitely runners, you know, they're not boots. And if they get wet, I think they dry considerably fast compared to other boots that I've had before. And especially the Columbia hiking boots shoes that I had before this. So I was very happy to get those shoes. And this is what I'm wearing today. I've gotten two of those so far. Mount Hood was interesting because Backcountry sponsored the video and helped me get some new gear. The North Face Gore-Tex shell the rain jacket that they, they got me is the one thing that has stayed in my kit. It's Gore-Tex, so fancy, expensive, <laughs> but it helps protect me from water and rain. You know, rain jackets do both. They're nice because they're very thin and uh, don't heat you up too much if you want protection from the rain or the wind because you don't want to be sweating in those situations. Kilimanjaro was next, which started hot in the jungle and ended cold up towards the top of the mountain. I did not get to the top if you've watched that video, but almost the whole hike was wet. So I tried to stay dry as possible and that Gore-Tex shell came in handy for sure. The Nano Puff was the, my new addition for this hike. So it's like an orange down jacket from Patagonia. Very warm for its weight, which is why I bring it on almost every hike now. If I need some warmth, especially at camp, once I stop walking, I'll wear it at night if it's super cold. And it's like bright orange, so add some color to my <laughs> black and gray color palette. So I like it because it helps me to stand out a little bit. Also on this trail, a Sherpa was wearing, um, no, he was using an umbrella whenever it started raining, which was super quick compared to everyone who had to stop, take a jacket out of their pack, put it on, put the pack back on, start walking. This guy would just whip out a umbrella and he was the driest person in the entire group throughout the entire hike. So it makes me reconsider umbrellas for hiking. So we'll see. Maclehose in Hong Kong was after that. It was a pretty temperate hike, a little on the warm side. So I didn't bring as much stuff, you know, no, no winter gear. And nothing really changed about my wardrobe. Mardi Hamal, colder hike. I wore extra warm clothes, but nothing really changed. Torres del Paine, once again, nothing changed. Except <laughs> I was at the airport at a Muji store this Japanese minimalist store and I found a black winter hat beanie and I just had to have it. So I swapped that out and that's the only thing that's changed in the last like four hikes, except the trekking poles, which I broke, but that's not something I wear, so it doesn't count. But yeah, that's such a good sign that my wardrobe has stopped changing. I feel prepared. Once again, I'm not getting sunburnt, I'm not getting blisters, which are the worst. So I feel so prepared, I feel good. So I got the hat, beanie, shades, shell, down jacket, sweater, shirt, gloves, pants, underwear, socks, shoes, dirty layering. You know, I'm getting dirty. It's okay if I'm not showering. It's, it's okay if I'm not, you know, smelling like roses. Uh, if I pass a stream, constantly like filling my water bottle, taking a drink, washing my hands, I'll give my hair a scrub if it needs it, wash my face, my arms, my legs. But hey, I'm out here. You know, my pits smell, it doesn't matter helps me be lightweight, helps me pack way less things. And you know, I'm a minimalist. I'm all about eliminating distractions. So, and that is what I wear when I go hiking. I would love to make more videos like this, breaking down different topics, maybe animals, food, setting up tents, just maybe reviews of just packs. So let me know if there's anything that you wanna know. It's quarantine time, so I've been doing a lot of podcasts, and I think it would be fun and great to go back through these hiking videos and answer any questions that you have. So send me an email, leave me a DM on Instagram, or leave a comment on this video. I actually got the idea for this from a previous comment that someone made, so thank you for that. Of course, if you want to listen to the podcast version of this episode, you can go to craigadams.com. Special thank you to all of the subscribers on YouTube who clicked the join button on my homepage to become sponsors of this video. You guys are helping me move away from traditional sponsors and just make more videos, so thank you. In addition to getting little gold stars next to your name when you comment on the channel or if I go live, depending on how long you've been joined as a member, you get featured 
right here at the end of every video that I post, I'm going to post all the people who are helping me make these videos. And I'm actually in between cameras right now. So Sony lent me out this camera and lens. And I'm actually really, really liking the Sony A6600 with the 10 to 18 ultra wide. Ah, oh, man, I miss wide angle. I think this is going to be my go-to camera next time I get back on trail. Hopefully within a month or two, we'll see. So yeah, that's it. I want to get back on the trail, but we got to be good. We got to stay inside. Uh, thank you so much for listening and take care. <laughs> we out here. What the hell are you doing? You, I'm a YouTuber. Leave me alone. I'm working. I'm working here. Might be basic, but I am proud of this. This is my uh, first fried rice. We out here walking. I've been doing like two hour walks every day.